Hey guys, it's 9.26 a.m. I've already had to redo this video three times because for some reason my screen capture program is not working very well. But I just want to capture this for, to document it that at 8 o'clock this morning, I was up at 8, had my cup of coffee, I was sitting there drinking my coffee, reading some stuff, and all of a sudden it felt like, remember back in the day when we would go to school and and the teacher, gym teacher, would turn on the lights and you'd hear the foomp and then, and then it would be like zzzz because those lights were making that vibrating sound. Well, I, it was like I, heard, like I could hear that. My, my head started getting very congested and my, my eyes got a little puffy, my nose got a little swollen. You can kind of hear I'm a little congested right now. And it was like, like with earphones though, it was really close in my ears. It was almost like tinnitus and it just went from something unnoticeable to suddenly me hearing this like zzz noise. It was just like every router in the neighborhood got turned on and the, and the, the antennas down the street at the top of the school just went on full blast, right? And I looked out the window to see because it just, I felt like, I don't know, like I said, I just felt congested and I could hear this terrible ringing in my ears and I looked out the window and it was, all the snow is gone. We got two feet of snow a week ago and it's all melted. So I decided to check out what was happening here on Wonderground. It's 53 degrees today in Michigan at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning. And as I went through, because it's super cloudy, I went through to see what the, uh, what the air quality index was. Because like I said, I suddenly got congested. And although it says it's good, the AQI is 44, which is still pretty high. And as I scrolled down, I wanted to look at the map. And sure enough, right outside my county here, they're all on a brown level, which means it's moderate garbage. Um, and as I scroll down here, this, this blew my mind. Look at this is the pressure. This is the forecast of the pressure, right? And look exactly when the pressure spiked. This was the forecast of it, and it's actually adjusted for what happens at 841. That would be almost to the minute when I started experiencing this. The pressure spiked by a good 7.7. .7. That's a lot, you guys. And so I wonder as I look at this, and, and then like I said, I don't have any explanation for this, but it is worth noticing that I physically experienced this intense spike in pressure, and it did feel as if, you know, all of a sudden I could just hear in my head, it was like that that zzz noise, but like two octaves higher, and it, it was like this, I could feel the pressure of this. And look at, it was actually forecasted right here at the moment that it actually occurred. It's nine o'clock now, it's, it's tapered off. I still feel the congestion, but I, I, and I don't, but I don't hear the screeching noise anymore. That's quieted down. But I just think that that's uncanny. How on earth would the weathermen be able to predict to the moment that we would experience a spike like this. I mean, I'm look, I'm not a meteorologist, you guys. I have not I have I wish I had I wish I could give you more insight into this. All I can do is speak from my personal experience and say, look, I, I've I've experienced the sensitivity to, to weather changes. We all do. And as we get older, you know, you hear about the old people saying, Yeah, I could tell it's gonna rain because the my hip is aching or whatever. So old people <laughs> old people experience these kinds of things, but 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 it's not like this, okay? <laughs> not like in a matter of literally twenty minutes. This is weird. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just making something out of nothing, but you guys, it's uh we've we've looked at the weather um, you know, when you look at the satellite images, you can see the patterning that happens in the clouds so intensely. They look like they've been scattered by EMF, um, you know, EMF breakages. They break into these crazy patterns. And, and, and it's even noticeable here on the pressure. I mean, how on earth? If you guys look at the, look at, let's just look at the hourly forecast here. Okay, it's one thing to say, yeah, it's going to be, you know, 50 degrees today. But to be able to tell us at the going to increase, I mean, either these are just elaborate guesses, which are pretty detailed. I mean, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have eight metrics 
okay, of forecast. Now, if these eight metrics of forecasting weren't pretty precise, it would be a tremendous waste of time for them to do these forecasts. What would be interesting to do is just to see, like during the day, just for, look at, you know, take a scan of this with our own eyes and see are there any dramatic switches forecasted during the day and then look to see like what we experience, like gauge it. I know this would take a lot of observation, but it might be worth it because I mean, today is supposed to be an anomalous day in Michigan. So I'm going to be tracking this for the day and I'll see if I can detect anything. But literally when these guys are able to forecast how much precipitation is going to occur to the hundredth of an inch, you guys, this is just very strange. I mean, I, you got to wonder, how do they measure this hourly? I mean, maybe they just spread this out over estimated periods of time based on a median. I don't know. I don't know. I've done statistics with with quality training and stuff like that, I guess I would have to investigate this on a really deep level. But let me just tell you this. From, from, my, from my experience of doing quality training, I'm a black belt in, uh, in Six Sigma. These kind of forecasts require such specificity. Such, there are so many metrics that go into measuring this. That when I see something like this, and I have physically experienced it, which is what makes it even worse, I, I, I just I can't help but marvel the ability of any measure taking process to to be able to to know this, to have a, a point seven or what is this point? Yeah, about point seven one increase in a matter of what is that? Nineteen minutes, you guys. 19 minutes over the course of 24 hours is a huge range. To be able to pinpoint this with such specificity tells me that there is something other acting on the environment besides just natural weather forces. This is, let me, let me make my argument here. And I wish I could give you, I, could, I wish I could reason this better for you by giving you my understanding about Six Sigma and how we, we measure variables and and, and predictabilities and standard deviations and stuff like this. You guys, this is such an enormous deviation, okay, that it's, it's, it's suspicious. There's, there's something to, to look at this and say, wait a minute, how could they have, there's, this is not a good guess. There, there's more to this than a good guess. And the fact that it sounded like, it sounded like somebody turned on fluorescent lights. I mean, not exactly. Like, like I said, it's, it's more like it would be like if somebody turned on fluorescent lights and you were wearing earphones because it's, it's very centralized. It sounds just like tinnitus. I, I'm, I'm just pointing out here, guys, that this is, this is an uncanny prediction that came to pass in our weather. And it's almost as if you guys, all these details, well, I'm not here, but all these details here are in the forecast, the weather forecast are just right in our faces. And it would be wise for us to start investigating a little bit more about how this stuff happens to just be known. I mean, look, weather is something that has a, a, is supposed to have a, a very random quality to it. The specificity with which these guys are able to predict the minute the temperature is supposed to increase from 53 to 63, this should have guard. This is an anomalous set of circumstances for for, for Michigan February weather to be 63 degrees is anomalous. They should not be able to predict this with spe such specificity that they can tell you that at 841, the pressure is going to jump 0.73 or 0.71 or whatever it was. I don't know. I, I just want to point this out and um, just get you guys to start thinking about this stuff because there's other, there are other, look, there, there must be other man-made controlled factors for the specificity of the forecast to reflect reality on an anomalous occasion. In other words, it's not normal for temperature to be, you know, 63 degrees in Michigan in February. So for them to be able to predict that it's going to be this anomalous means that there are other metrics that they are using to, to gauge this with such specificity.
Okay, Th there are only a few ways the temperature drops and jumps. There are other, there are, it's, 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 it's not normal. <laughs> it's not normal. So just start putting your thinking caps on, you guys. Look around at the weather antennas that we have. The, the cell phone towers that we have everywhere. Start looking into these details. You know, there's, there's a lot acting on our environment right now. And when we experience these things, it kind of, there's a reason why we're, why we're supposed to be paying attention to this and asking these questions. It's not, um, it's not unreasonable to ask. And uh, especially you guys out there who know about statistics and who know about how to measure data and, and, and look at the influence and variables that are impacting the data. This is supposed to be a, this is supposed to be a random situation. Weather is supposed to be something that's kind of randomly impacted by several environmental and var variables. There, there should not be this wisdom in, in calculated into our forecast unless they're actually unless those variables are foreknown. In other words, unless these guys are either psychic or they're, at, they're, they're exercising control, predicted control over these variables. Like for example, you can increase the pressure in a closed system or even an open system by, by, <clears throat> by uh, altering the electromagnetic frequencies that are functioning in that atmosphere. Think about your microwave, you guys. When you heat something in the atmosphere of the microwave, you're actually heating those electromagnetic frequencies are pummeling through that food you're trying to, to heat. And depending on how fast or how intense those electromagnetic frequencies are, they will actually cause an expansion of the of the item that's in the microwave to like pop, you know, if it's if it goes too fast. So there are ways to rapidly increase pressure by heat in the atmosphere, especially the upper atmosphere. And the fact that that you can just experience this sitting down and having your morning cup of coffee and and the fact that weather ground weather underground has this so perfectly you know forecasted says that there's that this is very suspicious it should be very suspicious it should be very suspicious now all of a sudden look here now it changed but at least you guys got to see see now it's changed the pressure forecast has changed <laughs> at least i caught the spike on Look at that. It's already changed. Well, it's, no, they actually changed it. That is crazy. You guys look at, see, now this is completely different. They changed it. Wow. I don't know, you guys. Yep. The 941 spike that I actually experienced has now been edited out. That is creepy. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I have to upload this video no matter how illogical it sounds. Hopefully, you guys will understand what I'm trying to say. I, I can't believe they changed it. Oh, well, I'll keep you posted on this. I'm going to be looking for this throughout the day and see what's going on. Take care, guys.